How's it going, YouTube? Uh, it's Wednesday, obviously, and um, tonight we're going to call this one Blind Leading the Blind. Uh, first of all, i got to apologize. I'm, you know, allergies are killing me. If I'm sniffing or sneezing, I do apologize. Um, but we're going to read from Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, it talks about not being conformed to this world, you know. I've personally in my life done this, right? I've conformed my life to fit in or whatever else, you know. Um, I've uh, said, oh, it's just one thing. It's not that big of a deal. And before you know it, I'm uh, compromised so far that I have no clue how to get my way out of where I'm at, right? I'm so deep, so far off the road, I can't find where I came from, right? And um, that's kind of what we're, we're talking about here, conform. But it's even more than that, right? Um, maybe you're reading the Bible, and right? And you're, you're just looking for something to make what you're doing okay. And so you're trying to find something that'll fit, that, that you can make say what you want to hear. So you could feel good about yourself, right? Um, I got to say, in my personal experience, there there would be one instance that really sticks out to me. Um, like I said, I'm not perfect in any means, but uh, I had gone to this church, and it was a little church, and they lost their uh, lease on the building and uh, really couldn't replace it. So they ended up closing down. So I ended up going church to church, trying to find where God wanted me to be, right? And I didn't want to just go to the first place, the most popular place or anything like that, right? I was trying to stay in a smaller church. It's not where he led me, right? But um, one of the places I went, right, I go in and I, I'm, you know, big church. I mean, multiple services, packed, standing room only. And so a lot of people went there, you know. I mean, it wasn't like 10,000 people or anything like that, but there was a lot of people. And I remember he... um the pastor, he talked about, uh, you know, when Jesus was asked what the two most important laws were, right? And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart. And it, this is from uh, Matthew 22, 37 through 40, if you want to look it up. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself, basically, is what he said, okay? And the, the pastor started and he said this and he read it and he said, but you know what God really meant is you got to love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you can't love your God. And you can't love others. And I'm sitting there thinking, there's no way he just said that. There's no way he just said what he said. He didn't mean it. And I sat there the entire service. And I, I'm really surprised I did because by the end I was, quite frankly, very upset. And it's not my place to judge this guy. And I'm not trying to go there. But... Basically, what he was saying is that, you know what, if you don't think highly of yourself, you can't think highly of God. You can't think highly of others. And it sounds right because it's the same words, it's just mixed up a little bit, right? But this is not what Lucifer's problem was. He exalted himself above God, that he thought he was equal to God, right? He, you know, in um, James 4, 6, the second part of it, it says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. So if you exalt yourself so high, how can you be humble to receive God's grace? Okay. Do you see what I'm saying though? I mean, I was so taken back by the fact that there was a church full of people, full of people. Could I have been the only one that was angry about this? I don't know. And I'm pretty sure that the, the pastor knew I was angry. I mean, I, I don't think I could have hit it very easily at the end of the service. I tried to get out there as quick as I could, but, you know, I was the first one out the door. But, um, you know, that's not really what bothered me. The guy himself ain't what bothered me, right? The Bible says there's going to be people that mislead you and this and that. But, you know, in our verse, it talks about not being conformed to this world. And for weeks, and even now, I sit there and I think, man, do we have a, I have a whole congregation of people that missed it? Did we have a whole congregation of people that are, I guess, conformed to this world that the things that are coming out of his mouth make sense to them, and so they believe it. And, and I think 
the problem I look at is in the second half of this, it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It made me wonder, did they read the Bible? Did they not know who God is? Did they not ask themselves, am I supposed to exalt myself above others? You know, Jesus came and he, he washed the feet of the, of the disciples, right? He got on his knees, he created the universe, and washed their feet. He said he was there to serve, not to, not to conquer or, you know, be first or whatever. He could have easily done that. He deserves that. But that's not why he came. And he said, be like him, right? So why would I put myself above others? The truth is, it makes you proud when you put yourself above others in God. It makes you feel like they're less than you. The truth is, you should serve others, right? And so, like I said, that's the thing that stands out to me about that. But this is why the second half of this verse is so important. It says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If, if you're conformed to this world and you don't read the Bible and you don't, I mean, I, when I say read the Bible, I mean read it and think about it and, and um, really think about how it applies to your life and the fact of who God is, right? Some people, they read the Bible and stuff gets mixed up a little bit like this and they believe it. You know, because they're not taking into account who God is. He doesn't change. So if we look at who God is and he's love and that he is who, you know, then we can look at other things and say, okay, this is right. I mean, a man committing adultery might say, well, you know, I don't love my wife or we always fight. And if I just get a divorce, it'll, it'll be for the best, right? But he doesn't see all the people that he hurts. All the, all the hurt in his wake, right? He doesn't care because in his mind, he's doing the right thing. When you're at, in reality, he should serve his wife, right? And he should do as God did. And see what God can do with him in that, right? See, we need to work on ourselves. But even with me, I, I pray that you guys, you read the Bible yourselves, that you study God's word, that you spend time thinking on him. And not just... Listen to someone talk. You know? It's so easy that we look at people that are in certain situations and the things they've done. And they call themselves Christians thinking they were on the right, on the right path. They followed this person. And this person had the most outlandish things for them to do. Right? You know, in Waco, right? The husbands and wives were there, but, you know... The one having relationships with the, and the kids with the wives wasn't their husband. How do you get to that point? It's by conforming to this world and not being renewed in God, right? So my prayer for you this week is that you'd be renewed in God, that you'd spend time with him, right? That you'd meditate and think on what he'd have you to do in your life, right? That you know what is a, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, right? Sometimes he ain't going to tell you right away. Don't just make an action just because you, you think you have to. Wait on God. Pray about it. When the right time is, he'll tell you what he wants you to do. I, I know he will, okay? So, you know, don't, I say don't be like Abraham, but... In reality, don't be like me either, right? Don't sit there and think you got to take it into your own hands to do what God promises. God promised Abraham a son, but he took, they took it into their own hands, and he, he went and had relations with his, uh, with, um, you know, his wife's uh, handmaiden, right? And the result of it, you know, we see till today, right? So meditate on it. That you would know God's acceptable and perfect will, right? But sometimes, like I said, you got to wait. Anyway, have a great week. I'll see you next Wednesday. Hopefully I feel better by then. And um, we can have another conversation. Thank you.